Let's be glad and rejoice in it. As we begin this morning, we invite everyone to fellowship with one another. The song says, we acknowledge you and we welcome the Holy Spirit in there. Yes. Thank you, God.
in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnant. You all remember Elizabeth, right? <coughs> John's mother. Yeah, John, John's mother. Mm -hmm. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a descendant of King David. And Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. All right. And so we see here where the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy with John, that the angel Gabriel, he spoke truth into her cousin's life. Uh -huh. did, 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 did you notice that, that six months into Elizabeth's pregnancy, Pregnancy, God came and spoke truth into her cousin's life. Mm -hmm. Now, this cousin, she she found out when the truth was spoken into her life that she was highly faithful. Uh -huh. That God was with her. Yeah. She she was a virgin. Mm -hmm. But Gabriel told us that. Woman of God, you are blessed and highly favored. God is with you. He spoke truth into her life. Uh -huh. that, that's really important. Sometimes we have potential inside of us, but if we don't have right people to come in and speak truth into our lives, that's good. Sometimes we'll believe what our surrounding is saying about us. Uh -huh. There's so many people that have the potential to do great and marvelous things, but so many will never do it because someone never, never came in and spoke truth, spoke truth. into their lives. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why it's important to you. Speak attention, speak positive things into the lives of people around us. All right. Don't get caught up in the environment that always criticizes. Parent, don't don't call your child bad. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> don't call folk names that aren't associated with excellence. You can't over. speak positivity into the lives. That's right. If they're created in the image of God, well, there's really nothing I can say that can compare to what God can have in store for you if you're willing to walk in what he's ordained for your life. And the angel came and spoke truth into this woman's life. Says you're blessed. <coughs> You're highly faithful. Now, how many people look at themselves as blessed? Amen. Amen. Highly faithful. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Doesn't matter what you're going through. If, if, if your perception of yourself is not favored by God, it really does not matter what goes on around you. That's right. Amen. If I have the favor of God, like Linda testified, that I, I, I lost the job, but so what? I got a negative report from the doctor, but so what? Somebody said something negative, but so what? Uh -huh. There's been a word spoken to my spirit that I highly faith. Meaning that it does not matter what I go through, it's going to work. To my good. Amen. 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 Now, I, I, it's something that I don't know if you call. But it says that Mary hadn't been touched. She was blessed now. She was favored by God. Mm -hmm. But I, 
Did you catch that she had been touched by a man? Uh huh. Right. Uh huh. But still had faith. Uh huh. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Had been touched by a man, but was still blessed. Amen. 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 I guess I need to show you the mindset of this time to, to help you go where I'm going spiritually. All right. Now, her cousin, Elizabeth, uh -huh. she considered herself blessed because she had been touched. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. Or as a result All right. of a man or, right. or a person. Now, that's why she considered herself blessed. Uh -huh. Maybe I would just show you. All right. All right. Look at verses 23 through 25. It says, He stayed at the temple until his term of service was over, and then he returned home. I'm talking about Zechariah. All right. Soon, and that's Elizabeth's husband. It says, Soon after his wife Elizabeth became pregnant. Uh huh. And went into seclusion for five months. And so Zechariah was in the temple and stayed there until God sent him home. Uh -huh. And when he sent him home, he touched his wife. Uh -huh. Come on now. And then it says that his wife became pregnant and, and remained in seclusion for five months. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then this is what she said now. Uh -huh. She said, how kind is the Lord is, uh -huh. she exclaimed. Uh -huh. He has taken away my disgrace uh -huh. of having no children. No children. And so the mindset of a, a woman during this time is, is that if she was not able to have a child, that she was disgraced. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That some kind of way God looked down on her. But, 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 but I want you to look real close now. So in order for a woman during this time to feel that she's favored by God, to feel that she's blessed by God, that means that she has to have the participation of someone else. All right. Is anybody with me? Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. That without the man, All right. she will always feel disgrace. Uh -huh. She will always feel that she's out of the favor of God. All right. And so although now Elizabeth is in this place to where she's feeling that God is with her uh -huh. and that God loves her, uh -huh. but she had to get there from being touched by a man. Amen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sometimes in life, we lose focus on where the blessing really comes from. All right. All right. All right. We lose focus on, on how the blessing really arrived. Uh -huh. Elizabeth didn't consider herself blessed until she had been touched by a person. All right. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. But God came to Mary. Uh -huh. 
the people that we're allowed to get closest to it, never underestimate how influential they are over our lives. Uh -huh. If you play in the mud, all right, come on. Don't get dirty. Amen. Amen. Somebody told me if you run with dogs, come around, don't be surprised when you yeah. come up with fleas. I, I'm sorry if I call somebody family member a dog. But we are what we are. All right. You can recognize a tree by the fruit that it bears. Yeah, that's right. Yes, Amen. 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 I would Amen. love to call you a saint. But based on the fruit that's coming from your life, all right, you appear to be a hate. Uh -huh. yeah, right. And so I can't really call you what you're not. That, that wouldn't even be fair. And if you run the door, maybe that's why you're scratching so much. All right. <laughs> all right. Tell the story. All right. Maybe that's what's going on. All right. And so Mary... She was probably going to have the same type of perception as those she was closest to. My Lord. Her cousin. <coughs> and her mind thought that unless she was touched by a man, uh -huh. that she couldn't be blessed. Man. That she couldn't be highly uh-huh. Yes, uh-huh. And it looks like in Mary's mind, she bought into the same lie. Uh-huh. Because I'm going to show you what Mary said. In verse 29, the scripture says, Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. All the angels said was, woman, you're blessed. You are blessed and highly favored uh -huh. by God. God is with you. Seemed like the simple response should have been, praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. From whom all <laughs> blessings flow. But it says she was confused <laughs> and disturbed. How could I be blessed? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. How could I be highly favored? There must have been something messed up in how she saw herself. And how she, she saw being in a blessed place and highly favored by God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is there someone this morning that's a, a little confused mm -hmm. in how we become blessed? And highly favored. Mary was confused and disturbed because ingrained in her mind was the concept that a woman was truly blessed when she was able to conceive and bear a child. And this blessing came only as a result of being touched. By a man. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so some kind of way they had connected in order for me to really be blessed by God. Okay, in order for me to be blessed, I got to conceive and bear a child. Uh -huh. But in all, the only way I can, can conceive and bear a child is that I have to be touched by him. And so as a result, in order for me to really be blessed and highly favored, there has to be a man. Amen. Well, mm -hmm. that's all thinking when we're thinking about being blessed and, and highly favored. And so, so Mary also infected by this, this bad thought and this bad theology. Mary was confused and disturbed, thinking that the only way that she could be blessed is by being touched by a man uh -huh. or a person. Uh -huh. But you know, I, 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 I know he said I'm blessed. I know he said I'm highly favored. Uh -huh. I know he said the Lord is with me. Uh -huh. But I've never got a confirmation from a man. Mm -hmm. I've never been affirmed by a person. Uh -huh. I've never 
have been touched by it. And so how could I, even though God's messenger has spoke truth into my life? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, in verses 30 through 33, the angel told her because he understood that her, her mind and the way she thought was a little flawed. He said, don't be frightened, Mary. The angel told the angel told her, for God has decided to bless you. Uh -huh. When God decides to bless you, well, when God decides to right. show favor of right. your life, uh -huh. why does God need anyone else to affirm, approve, confirm, or ignite what he's spoken into your life? Man. Don't be afraid, Mary. God has decided to bless you. He says you will become pregnant and have a son. And you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high God. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestors David. And then in verse 33, it also goes and says, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. God the angel spoke to Mary and told Mary, there's something on the inside of you. There's something on the inside of you that has the ability to provoke greatness and ignite greatness inside of you. He said there's something on the inside of you that when it comes forth, it will be known as the anointed one. Well, it will be known as Jesus. Yeah. He said that he will reign over the kingdom of Israel forever. There will be nothing that will be able to stop the reign of what comes forth from you. How many know that there's something on the inside of you and there's no water that can quench the fire? There's no obstacle that can stop what God wants to do through you, but you have to realize that you're blessed and highly favored. And you're blessed and highly favored only because God says you're blessed and highly favored. Amen. The angel confirmed with Mary that the blessing is in her bed and that she should name him Jesus. Says Mary, the blessing is down in your bed. And it says, and, and, and when the blessing comes forth, there are some specific things you need to do with the blessing. The first thing you need to do is you need to name the blessing Jesus. Right. There are some things that are down in your bed. There are some things that are down in your spirit. And God said, I put them there for a reason. He says, I put them there, and, 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 and please understand, I, I need you to function with purpose with this blessing. I need you to function with purpose and, and obedience with this blessing. He says, I need you to name it Jesus. Mm -hmm. He says, this is where we, we give too much credit to others. This is where we, we greet, uh, give too much credit to, to others being our lives. Uh, you know, I, I'm not coming against the, the idea, and I agree that the church is a corporate body made up of, of many members. I, I, I agree with that right there. I agree that the church is, is, is about supporting one another and holding one another up. Uh -huh. And I also uh, like the song that says, I need you. And, and you need me, uh -huh. and we're all a part of God's body. We, we definitely need one another. Amen. We need shoulders to cry on. We, 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 we need friends to go to and, and, support, and to support us when we're going through. We, we need folk that can help us out and, and build us up in Jesus. And, 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 and I agree that we need one another. But I, I want to be very clear that I don't need anyone to be favored or blessed by God. I, I need you to be real clear with that. Uh, although we, we are supportive of one another and, and we lean and depend on one another, whether or not we are blessed by God or highly favored by God has nothing to do with anyone else. Has nothing to do with how many friends we have. Uh, and, and, and here in the scripture in verse 34, the scripture shows us in verse 34, it says that Mary asked the angel, he says, but how can I have a baby? I am a virgin. How can I have walk in 
this place of blessing. I'm a virgin. How can I, I be in this place to where I'm highly favored? I'm a virgin. In my mind, it takes a baby to be able to be looked upon as blessed and highly favored. But, but I've not been touched by a man. I, 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 I've, not been, I, I've not been with a man. How can I be blessed and highly favored and I've not been with a man? But, but the scripture, it, it, it goes on and, and Mary, she, she asked the question. She, she asked, how can, can this be done? And I ask you the question today. How can I be blessed and highly favored and, and a man or a person not be responsible for my elevation? See, that's where we take the turn right there and, and then we, we, we lose focus right there. We, we think that folk has something to do with our elevation and, and with our promotion. I, 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 we have to make sure, I, I made sure that when L.Y., when she was going through what she was going through, I, 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 when she told me thank you, I, I told God thank you in her presence. I, I wanted to make sure she understood that it had nothing to do with the, the male man that, that brought her encouraging words. It had nothing to do with the male man that, that encouraged her along the way. But, but the blessings came from God. And, and so here we see in this scripture where, where this woman is blessed and highly favored, but she's asking the question, how can I be elevated? How can I be promoted? Uh, and, and a man not be responsible for my elevation or my promotion? Well, well when I look at Joseph in the picture, this was a fiance of Mary. When I look at Joseph and his job, his job was, was to support and, and not hinder. That, that's what Joseph's job was. His job was to, to support Mary and all that God had put down on the inside of her and not hinder the blessings of God. And so there will be some Josephs in our lives, some male and some female that will come in our lives and God will use them to be supportive and to not hinder, to lift us up and build us up when we're torn down, to not say words that's going to bring us down, but speak into our lives. But it's clear that we understand that Joseph is only there as a support and someone not to bring up an obstacle in my life. Here in the scripture where we see that Joseph's job was to support and not hinder. But he could not cause Mary to be blessed nor highly favored. That Joseph didn't have the power to call her to be blessed nor highly favored. But the Bible says in verse 35 that there was somebody else's job to cause her to be blessed and highly favored. And the Bible says when Mary asked the question, how can I have a baby? I've not been touched by a man. No one is coming up and spoken to help me get a job. No one is calling
what's in me or what in you. The doors of the church are open. I want to invite those to the altar that, that maybe you, you need to go ahead and give your life to God. I remember with my parent being, my, my, my family being so deep into the church, that was all I knew. It was all I knew was church. I, that's what I did on Sunday. I can't, I can't even think of missing. That's just what I did. But you know what? I, I was being trained, but it, I really had never made a decision. Even though I grew up in it and it was all I knew until I went to college, it wasn't until age 27 that I actually accepted him for myself. Right. There may be someone here that's still, still feeding off of mama or daddy or grandmama or granddaddy's religion. And you need to come on up here and, and get it for yourself. Amen. If you'd like to make a decision to on your own to, to live for God, to accept God in your life. I want to invite you to the altar to kneel down. If you'd like to make a decision today on your own, not because mama made you do it, daddy made you do it, not because, but, but on your own, accept the decision to, to accept Christ in your life. You might be 40 years old, but you still, you still, living off of that old time. Uh -huh. You're still living off of somebody else's and you need to go ahead and make a decision, a commitment on your own. I want to invite you to the altar. And then there may be someone that you accepted him, but things got kind of cloudy along the way. You, you actually lost focus and you started trying to impress man, thinking that was going to cause you to be blessed and highly favored. You started neglecting the things of God and trying to impress man trying to impress man and got nothing in return and today you learn that, that that's a, that's not a good focus that's out of focus that's blurry and today you want to come and accept christ for yourself you want to come and, and recommit get it straight I, I i strayed off i i lost focus but now i'm ready to come back and and get it right if you'd like to give your life back to god today there's opportunity for you here at the altar and then there may be someone that you might have a relationship already, or you might not be ready to make that decision yet, but you would like a church home. A church home that's going to nurture you and, and grow you as a Christian. It's going to develop you and it's going to speak truth into your life, speak the word of God into your life. Not play games and gimmicks, but, but it's going to deal with the, the true word of God. And you'd like to be a part of the St. Paul family. I want to invite you to the altar. If you're here, come to the altar now. If God has put in your heart that you know what I need to, I need to be to that altar today. I want you to come and I want you to kneel down to the altar. And we'll work it all out. The altar is open. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? This is your opportunity. Will you come? celebrate the best gift that God has ever given to man. Would you give him the best gift that you could ever give to him? Which is your life. Will you come today? Will you come today? This is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. This is your opportunity.